Around 30 years ago, scientists discovered the first confirmed exoplanets orbiting other stars. Since then, humanity has been haunted by countless unanswered questions. Could there actually be life outside the solar system? And what would that mean for us? Such questions, of course, could be scary, but perhaps an even more terrifying scenario would be this one. What if there's no life? What if we're truly alone in the universe? A recent study by ETH Zurich's Institute for Particle Physics and Astrophysics analyzed what would happen if scientists found no sign of life on about 40 to 80 carefully studied exoplanets. What would it tell us about the universe? Would we finally have to give up on our search for aliens? While science isn't always about finding positive answers, often researchers have to deal with negative results and even more questions surfacing as they dive deeper. But according to the recent study, finding no sign of life whatsoever would actually give us invaluable information. And paradoxically, it could take us closer to discovering alien life after all. The Problems with Searching for Life on Other Planets For years now, we've known that there are potentially inhabitable planets out there. In 2014, NASA announced the discovery of Kepler-186f, an Earth-sized planet orbiting a red dwarf star. A year later, there was the existence of Kepler-452b, also known as Earth 2.0. While we don't know for sure that these planets are habitable, there is a good chance that life could happen on them. The SETI Institute, which looks for signs of extraterrestrial intelligence, has been looking into these two planets, and so far, they found nothing. But despite that, the search continues, even though it's not always easy. The issue is that when scientists look for life on other planets, they have to be super specific. They can't just ask, is there life on these planets? I mean, that question's way too broad, and asking it wouldn't provide any real useful answers. In reality, examining planets is a complex process. Even finding a planet in the first place not exactly straightforward, you have to look at the light of their stars and any potential dimming that occurs. There are special telescopes that could do this work, but they're not infallible. And even once you successfully locate a planet, things don't get easier. For example, astrophysicists have to be careful to consider the planet's distance from its star, its surface, its moons, its atmosphere, its liquid water, and more. If they find out that the planet is sufficiently Earth-like, they're one step closer to being able to assume that life might be possible on said planet. But even then, things aren't so simple. For one, life may also be possible on planets that are nothing like Earth. More importantly, we can't always be sure that our observations are correct. Science has come far over the last century, and we still make significant progress every single day. But even so, people make mistakes, and so does technology. If scientists miss a small clue or make an incorrect assumption, they could easily dismiss a planet that would actually be perfect for life. And that's part of the problem. The Implications of Null Results Dr. Daniel Angerhausen is a physicist who led a team of researchers at ETH's Zurich Institute for Particle Physics and Astrophysics. The team looked at what we could learn if we found out there was no life on 40 to 80 carefully studied exoplanets. This number of planets wasn't picked at random. The study tried to look at how many planets we would need to observe to actually learn something one way or another. What they found out is fascinating, and it could have some serious implications about the universe. If scientists found no life on the studied planets, they could arrive at a staggering conclusion that fewer than 10 to 20% of these kinds of exoplanets actually have life on them. Now, on the surface, you might think that this would be discouraging and almost useless information to have, but it's not actually the case at all. In reality, this number would give us much more information than we currently have. Right now, scientists have no idea just how prevalent life is in the cosmos. They aren't even sure what the probability of life in space is. Right now, scientists have no idea how prevalent life is in the cosmos. For all we know, the number could lie anywhere from nowhere to loads. Basically, as of right now, we have very little information about life in our galaxy and beyond. So, knowing that less than 10 to 20% of exoplanets have life on them would help focus future studies and allow astrophysicists to conduct much more informed research. They'd know the upper limit of just how common life in the universe is, which would be useful information to have. Most importantly, 10 to 20% is not a small number at all. You might think that this means there are very few planets that could have life on them, but even if you just look at the Milky Way and assume that only 10% of its planets have life, then we're still talking about at least 10 billion planets overall. 
Finding out that there is no life on these 80 studied planets may be discouraging on some level, but we wouldn't have to lose hope. The search for extraterrestrial life would be far from over. We'd have more information than we had before, which could get us closer to making a significant positive discovery. Now, all of this sounds great, but unfortunately, it comes with a huge caveat. To be able to confidently say that life exists on only 10% or less of Earth-like habitable zone planets, astrophysicists would have to get a perfect null result. They'd have to be 100% sure that there's no life on these 80 planets at all. But given all the possible research pitfalls, is such a thing even achievable, or are the uncertainties and potential gaps in our knowledge too big for us to realistically know something like this for sure? How do we avoid making incorrect assumptions? Avoiding uncertainties and false negatives In astrophysics, findings and observations often come with at least a small level of uncertainty. For example, if our technology misses a biosignature, a planet may be labeled a dead planet and we might get a false negative. Similarly, if a planet that doesn't fit in all the required criteria is included in the research, the findings may be skewed as a result. Even observing a larger number of planets and using our best instruments isn't always enough to avoid uncertainty. When talking about this recent study, Angerhausen admitted that asking the right questions, ones that are measurable and specific, is of the utmost importance. Scientists also have to be careful and make sure that they're never overconfident when dealing with research like this. That's how they can avoid too many uncertainties and ambiguous results. To achieve perfect null results, it's also important to look out for any potential statistical bias. Angerhausen's team looked at two different statistical frameworks, the Bayesian and the Frequentist methods. The Bayesian model uses prior assumptions, which come with the danger of creating mathematical bias. Naturally, this it could again skew the data and impact the final results of any thorough research. Luckily, this doesn't seem to be much of a danger for the astrophysicists looking at these exoplanets. Angerhausen's team found that in this case, the influence of PRAS is limited, and both Bayesian and frequentist statistics produce similar results. The danger of bias is still there, but it's pretty small. If the researchers are careful and perhaps even use both frameworks in a complementary way, they should be able to avoid any larger mistakes that could prevent them from getting accurate null results. Why is research matters? So, Anghausen's team looked at this 80-planet scenario in theory. They weren't actually planning to look into the planets themselves, but this study will likely prove really useful in the near future. Right now, there are two upcoming missions planning to search for signs of exoplanets. These missions will look for signs of water, oxygen, and other biosignatures on planets that are similar to Earth. One of these missions will be conducted by ETH Zurich, the same university Angerhausen's team conducted the recent study at. ETH Zurich's mission is known as the LIFE mission, with the acronym standing for Large Interferometer for Exoplanets. The other upcoming mission will be led by NASA. Their HWO mission, or Habitable Worlds Observatory mission, will be looking at similar things as the LIFE mission in the hope of discovering extraterrestrial life. Both missions are still years, possibly even decades from launching, but the current research can help both ETH Zurich and NASA better prepare for the future. Knowing what kind of uncertainties and biases they may want to avoid and what each type of result could mean will likely aid them in their design choices, survey planning, and interpretation of possible findings. And it's not only Angerhausen's study that will come in handy. The 2024 paper published by the American Astronomical Society also provided helpful guidelines for the LIFE and HWO missions. Titled Database of Candidate Targets for the LIFE mission, this study considered which exoplanets the researchers should focus on. To avoid wasting precious time and resources, each mission will have to come up with a specific plan. There are so many potential planets out there, but not all of them would be ideal candidates for these missions. While perfect null results could still give us useful information about life in the cosmos, the goal of these missions is actually finding life, after all. This is why carefully choosing which planets to explore matters quite so much. Focusing on the wrong planets could lead us further away from the desired outcome and even slightly diminish the usefulness of any null result. The 2024 paper proposed that the researchers should look at nearby main sequence stars, especially those that are likely to have planetary systems with stable orbits. Similarly, prioritizing stars that are not going to be obscured by the sun throughout the year 
will make for better targets for the LIFE and HWA missions. But the best systems for these missions are the so-called Golden Targets. These are the systems that are known to include potentially habitable planets and are also relatively easy for us to observe. At this stage, there are about 10 of these targets, and they're considered to be the top priority for both missions. And since both LIFE and HWO are expected to launch sometime in the 2040s, there is still plenty of time for scientists to discover even more of these promising golden targets that could possibly lead us to discovering life outside of planet Earth. Chances of finding no life at all While finding life on other planets is the goal, at this point we know that finding no life could also aid us in our research. But what is the actual likelihood of us getting those null results? When interestingly, scientists don't actually agree on the answer to this. In a Q&A, Angerhausen called this quote, the big question. He admitted that the scientific community is torn on this. Many astrobiologists believe that life is likely abundant in the cosmos. It forms easily and it's found everywhere, we just haven't actually found it yet. On the other hand, there are those who think that this is not the case at all. These skeptics believe that life on Earth only happens due to a series of extreme coincidences. This would make life in the universe genuinely rare. If the optimists are right, we could uncover alien life in the next 15 years or so. But if the skeptics are right, we could come out empty-handed. At this stage, all we really have is guesswork. There is no way for us to know just how common life on other planets is. That's what the LIFE and HWO missions are for. If all goes well, we'll know much more about the universe by the 2040s or 2050s. Either way, the stakes are high. If we find out that there's life out there, the world as we know it could change forever. Imagine knowing for a fact that there are aliens. You might wonder how advanced the civilizations might be, and how might our day-to-day -day life change if we do make contact, however unlikely that might be. Now, at the same time, before we get a null result, there will still be a lot to consider. According to Angerhausen, if we do find out that life on Earth was just a massive coincidence, it could inspire us to take care of our planet just a little bit better. <laughs> it's optimistic, mate, isn't it? There's also the question of money. These missions will cost billions of dollars. They are massive investments, and we can't take that lightly. That's why it's so important that we still learn something, even if we don't find any sign of life on these 80 planets. If we fail to discover extraterrestrial life and the null results don't bring any useful information, it could raise questions about the extreme amount of money that went into the research. At the end of the day, the spending should be justifiable. It should give us new knowledge and bring us closer to important discoveries. This is the reason why scientists are already preparing for the possibility of null results. Getting them to being as close to perfect as possible is crucial if we want the null results to actually mean something and not just leave us in more total uncertainty. Is searching for life actually worth it? Given the large expenses and the possibility of unreliable results, should the LIFE and HWO missions even go ahead? Active, systematic search for extraterrestrial life began in the mid-20th century. So far, we've found nothing, as you all well know. So at what point do we decide that it might just be all a waste of money? Is our curiosity and desire for answers really worth all of this? Many of us would like to know, for certain, whether or not we're alone in the universe. It's been a topic of many discussions, both scientific and casual. More to some, this research might seem frivolous. There's no denying that finding answers would likely change things forever. If we find out we're truly alone, it will become obvious just how rare and fragile life truly is. More than ever, we'll have to consider the real value of what we have here. The fact that we are here, indeed, on this planet, living, breathing, and thinking, it already seems almost miraculous. But if we knew that we were the only ones with this privilege, it would have to shift our perspective entirely. Earth would become the only living place in an essentially vast universe. Similarly, if we ever find proof of other life, our future will also transform. Just think about that. We might one day be able to interact with other beings. In this scenario, we could learn about them, and as a result, learn about ourselves too. So yeah, even if we don't find life on these 80 planets, we'll likely still gain something. It'll take us one step closer to finding out the truth about our universe. We'll find out more about extraterrestrial life than we knew before, and in about 20 years, we might finally know how rare life really is, whether or not that includes finding proof of aliens. Thank you for watching.